Adobe finally released their version of the Illustrator for the iPad and uh, we were looking forward to test it. Adobe Illustrator is since many years a favorite of uh, t-shirt designers to create vector designs. In the last few weeks we tested the program. In this video we are going to share our first impression from our perspective as t-shirt designers for direct-to-garment printing. Hi everyone, this is Everson with DTG Merch, where we talk everything you need to know to run a successful t-shirt business. We normally post tutorials and other helpful content about topics like t-shirt design, print on demand and direct-to-garment printing. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. And we are very excited that our YouTube channel is growing. We reached 250 subscribers. Thanks to each and every one of you. We really appreciate your support. To give something back to the community, we are hosting a giveaway. We are giving away full access to our DTG printing online course to five lucky subscribers of our newsletter. I will put the link and all the details in the description below. A while ago, we did a video where we talk about the best programs to create t-shirt designs. You will also find a link to that video in the description below. And Adobe Illustrator ranked third and for good reason. Now they released the iPad version and uh, we are curious to see if it can live up to the expectations. So without further ado, let's have a look at it. And uh, let's start with the good news. There are a lot of things we like about the Illustrator for the iPad. One of the first things you notice when you open Illustrator on the iPad is that they are trying to have a consistent user interface in all their applications. So if you are already used to one of their programs, it is extremely simple to find your way around. It feels like it was created for the iPad. You know, many programs feel like they are desktop versions that someone just slapped on the iPad, but this is not the case here. Everything seems to be very thought out, all menu items are easily accessible, and the integration of the Apple Pencil is truly outstanding. As you can see, on the left side we have all our tools. On the right, you can access all settings like the Layers menu or the Pathfinder, which is called the Shape Builder. All menu items are easy accessible. And uh, one nice thing that they added is a context-sensitive menu that hovers next to the object. If you select an object, the menu pops up. Here it gives you quick access to tools like Stroke Thickness, and you can quickly duplicate or delete objects. You can also move around the position of the object in layers. If you tap and hold and move up, your object moves up in the layers menu. If you slide down, the object moves down. That gives a super quick access to many functions we use on a regular basis, so this is awesome. Down here in the right corner you can see this little dot. You can also move it around on the screen and position it in a comfortable place. This is great for left-handed people. This dot is called the Modifier Select tool. And it is very useful. For example, let's rotate the object. As you can see, I can freely rotate it. But once I press the button, it snaps to certain angles. Depending on what you are doing, this little dot has a different function. And last but not least, there are hand gestures. You can pinch to zoom in and out. You can undo with a two fingers tap and redo with a three finger tap. To see all available gestures, click the question mark symbol on the top and select view gestures. Another thing we enjoy is uh, how well it uh, synchronizes with the Creative Cloud. 
It is possible to switch back and forth between the desktop and the iPad. This means there is no more need to airdrop things around or use other ways to transfer one file from one device to another. Every file we tried to open on both devices was working. Even more complex ones that we created earlier in the desktop app. It also integrates with the files app, which means you can access all files on other cloud services like iCloud, Dropbox and also Google Drive. They did a very good job on this. Another feature we like is how easy it is to set up additional artboards. If you activate the artboard button on the left, it is easy to add extra boards, resize them and rearrange them. With this program, you can get creative. One of the first things that stood out to us is the integration of Adobe Fonts. Adobe Fonts are part of the Creative Cloud subscription, so if you have that, you immediately have access to thousands of fonts as part of the subscription. This is something we enjoy a lot. They also release this new repeat tool. You can create all kinds of patterns and designs with this tool and it is so much fun to use. We also enjoy the new blob drawing brush. It makes drawing vector designs feel very natural. When the blob brush is active, you can access the smoothness feature. If you turn it all the way up, you can create slick designs. Look how easy it would be to draw an almost perfect circle by hand. On the other hand, if I reduce the smoothness to zero, it would look something like this. Not very impressive. Huh? Another nice feature is the freeform gradient. Instead of just creating normal gradients that go from one color to another, we can now put several colors within one form. With this, you can create some very nice designs. As you can see, the program is kind of a t-shirt designer playground. A dream come true, um, but uh, nope, wait. There are also a few things we did not like that much, so let's have a look at them. As much as we like this program, we must admit that there are a few things that are quite not there yet. One thing we missed is image tracing. As you might know, we draw on Procreate quite a lot. It would be great if we had the option to just import the design and vectorize it in one program. But this is still not there. But if you want to know how you can do this using an iPad only, Maggie released a tutorial about it some time ago. I will also put the link in the description below. There are some other functions that we are missing or at least we could not find them. There is no way to import additional brushes, which would be a nice thing to have. Also, we could not find a way to distort images like applying a warp effect or how to add a drop shadow. One thing we found a little bit strange was the limited availability of export options. You can only choose the unit and this is it. We also did not find the setting for the DPI anywhere. That was a little bit disappointing. Even though you can zoom in and zoom out, there is no way you can rotate the canvas around. This is something we use a lot with other programs, so it is something we have to get used to. So, how much does it cost to get Adobe Illustrator for the iPad? It is part of the Adobe Cloud subscription, so it is not for free. If you already have a subscription, then you can download it from the App Store and sign it with your Creative Cloud login. You can also get a separate subscription for Illustrator. We believe it is then for both uh, desktop and iPad. And I think in Europe is currently 24 euros for the single program. So, unfortunately, Illustrator for the iPad is not in line with the other applications it is competing with. For example, Affinity Designer is a one-time purchase. Compared to that, it is expensive to get the Illustrator on the iPad. So let's find out if we believe it's worth the investment.
Does it work in any iPad? Well, we tested it on the uh, iPad Pro, third generation, and also in a uh, iPad Mini 5. It runs fast on both devices. The only downside is the smaller screen size on the iPad Mini, but it is surprisingly usable considering its small size. If you move that dot around, you can hold it with one hand and draw, which makes it extremely portable. We believe it is a fantastic program, but we honestly would not buy it if we did not have already the Adobe Cloud subscription. In this case, we would rather stick to one of the cheaper options, like Affinity Designer or Vectornator, which are one-time purchase only and do not need an ongoing subscription. Also, someone who already uses Affinity Designer may feel a little limited because it has many more features. But if you already use Illustrator and own a subscription, then it is absolutely worth it. The way it integrates with the iPad and the cloud makes it easy to use and we love the experience. For us, it's a game changer to switch seamlessly between working on the computer and working on the iPad, which allows for a much more relaxing working and it is easier to continue working on the go. Since we usually travel a lot and spend a lot of time outside of the office, this is a very useful feature for us. We are really missing some features like image tracing, but Illustrator for the iPad is new and they are constantly releasing new features. So, hopefully Adobe adds this missing feature soon. At the moment, it is more of a supplementary tool for us. It is not a full replacement for the desktop version yet, but just for the drawing aspect, it is much nicer to use than the desktop. And using it with the Apple Pencil is simply fantastic. As you can see, as t-shirt designers, we are quite excited about the features of the new Illustrator app for the iPad. And if you enjoyed this video, maybe you will also like another one of our t-shirt design videos linked here on the screen. So, all the best and see you in the next video.